A few years ago, I came across a little cottage that I briefly considered buying. It was rustic and simple. It was located in this beautiful place, but the only problem was that it was in Italy. And I was there on a pilgrimage at Assisi, the home of St. Francis and St. Clair, and up on the hill was where St. Francis had his monastery, and you went down this path to the place where St. Clair's convent was. And there were maybe three homes or something along the way, but only one that was right along the path. And as we walked down that path that day, it had a for sale sign on it. And I thought, wouldn't that be neat? It's a beautiful setting in the Umbrian hills of central Italy and a very special place. Now suppose I had bought that house and maybe even took a little time to clean it up, put some of my belongings in it, and then take the key and lock the door and continue on my trip and finish it and get on a plane and come back here. And I told all of you, you'll never believe this, I bought a cottage in Italy you would say, that's foolish. You don't live there. You live here. And it would be even more absurd if you were traveling through a place and you spent all that you had building some giant palace where when you got home, you didn't have one to live in. You were homeless. You would say, this is so foolish of you to do. And yet, that's kind of what we have a tendency to do. We focus on this life when we are passing through. We chase fame and fortune, power and pleasure, and we don't think about making preparations in the next life where we will live for ages and ages, forever. And I think when we think about eternity, the perspective of this gives us a better view of things. We can see things more clearly, and we can judge what, we, what must be done a little bit better. And from this, this perspective of eternity, I think we should look at the, the, the Gospel reading today, in which Jesus has some very challenging things to say to us. And I think that we should allow them to challenge us, and to strike our hearts, and to maybe convert us a little bit more to Him. And, I feel challenged by these readings as well, because they really are. This is the Sermon on the Plain that we call it. It's, it's in St. Luke's Gospel. St. Matthew's Gospel has a Sermon on the Mount. And they both have Beatitudes, although these ones are just a little bit different. And so I want to illustrate what he says with two examples. One came from the life of St. Anthony of Padua. He was visiting this town when they were having a funeral for a wealthy man. And this man was greedy and miserly, and he used others to gain his wealth. And St. Anthony was inspired to say to the crowd, don't bury this man in consecrated ground because his soul is lost, because he turned away from God and put his strength in earthly things. And he said, as a sign of this, his, you will find his heart with his money in the box. And so they examined his body, and his heart was not there. And they went and opened his treasure chest, and there among the gold coins was that man's heart. To signify what Jesus says, where your treasure is, there also will your heart be. And Jesus tells us today, woe to you who are rich, for you have received your consolation. This is a challenging saying. The next, the second example is from uh, the life of Saint Bernadette of Subaru. She was a young girl, 15, and she was from a very poor family. Her family lived in the town jail. At least it used to be a jail until they decided that it was not fit for prisoners. And her family took up residence there. And she was going to collect sticks to build a fire to keep her family warm when Our Lady appeared to her, and this is at Lourdes in the south of France in the Pyrenees Mountains. 
and Mary appeared to her something like 15 times. And one of the things she said was, have the priest build a church here. And they did that. And so St. Bernadette could have become very famous and traveled the entire world and said, you will never believe this. Mary appeared to me this many times. She told me this and that. She could have maybe amassed a small fortune by paying people, for having people pay her a pretty penny to tell the story and to lead pilgrims through um, that place in Lourdes. But she didn't do these things. She decided that she would live a life of prayer and penance and go and live in a convent away from the world and hide for the rest of her life. So she went and took a vow of poverty and even didn't have an opportunity to, to keep telling the story because when she arrived at the convent, they, they knew who she was and they said, Bernadette, you can tell your story once and then no more. And so she got there, she told the story to all the sisters and then never talked about it for the rest of her entire life. And she went on to have a relatively short life. She died of tuberculosis. But we know that now she has eternal glory and is among the saints in heaven. And her body even shares in this. When they exhumed it, when they were looking into her canonization process, they found that it was incorrupt. And so there it is today in Nevers, France, in a glass coffin. It looks like she is sleeping because it is a sign of our resurrection that is to come. So her life illustrates what Jesus said today also. Blessed are you who are poor, for the kingdom of God is yours. These challenging sayings of Jesus ought to be taken into consideration in our own lives. Here in this life, we have no lasting city. We seek one that is to come. And so we ought to act that way and allow these words of Jesus that challenge us to make us more focused on that, to focus on what is to come and not so much on this passing life where we are only pilgrims and where we will, we will dwell here just a number of years and there for ages unending. That is the place of our eternal home. This is the place of our journeying. And we need to keep that in perspective.